Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, vidyur ma mardam gamaya. Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya. Generally stated, the objective of this episode is to help the children master a few skills of English language. What do we mean by mastering the skills of a language? I believe it can be composed of four skills. One, one has to master the sound system of the language. Secondly, one has to get a large number of words in the language. And thirdly, one has to learn the structural pattern in which the words are arranged in order to convey a kind of sense in that language. And fourthly, one has to choose the kind of sentence form that would suit uh, the occasion for communicating. So these are the four aspects of learning a language. For the listening practice session, we have uh, a description of Verley and Akula. Verley Tourist Village is situated beyond Shangamukham Beach at one end of Tiruvanandavaram city nearly five kilometers from the airport. Undulating greens interspersed with inspired pieces of Sri Kanai Kunyaraman's work lend the place a natural charm. The Shankar that greets us in the water near the entrance is a beautiful piece that blends with the ocean environment. A well-maintained garden with flowering plants of various kinds is home to birds and fishes in ponds. A nursery is attached. Abstract sculptures in the midst of the sprawling lawns lend an aura of feminine power.
A boat dock is the center of activity at whaling. Pedal boats, row boats, speed boats and paddle boats are available for hire. The floating bridge leads to a relatively unexplored beach beyond. The beach is virgin, the sands golden. A new pathway constructed along the water's edge leads right up to Akulam, the neighboring tourist spot. Families consider Veli a pleasant picnic spot. The landscaped garden and the greenery blend with the nature around and add to the grandeur of the water's edge. The sight of traditional boats carrying coconut husks and other goods through the waterways takes us back to the ancient days of trade and commerce. Akulam, lying next to Veli, is another favorite water spot for city dwellers. It lies along a long stretch of backwaters between islands of coconut grooves and the ocean beyond. A couple of old boats greets the visitor at the Akulam Boat Club. The place is still rustic with its boats, water fauna and birds. A water park, hilltop resting place, children's park and a musical fountain are the major attractions for tourists. What is Veli's special feature? Veli is an estuary, a place where the lake meets the Arabian Sea. What are the boats available? Pedal boat, row boat, speed boat and paddle boats. Why do families like Veli? Families consider Veli a pleasant picnic spot. Who is the sculptor behind Veli landscaping? Sri Kanai Kunjiram. What is Akulam famous for? Akulam lies along a long stretch of backwaters and has boating facilities. What are the major attractions at Akulam? Water park, hilltops, children's park and the musical fountain are the major attractions. In addition to that, we have a humorous story entitled Price for Food. This is a very interesting story in the sense that the shopkeeper is outwitted by a poor farmer, by his simple logic. A greedy 
sharp honor once tried to fool a poor man. Do you want to know what happened then? Once upon a time, there was a poor farmer. His sugarcane fields did not yield much by way of harvest and he always found it difficult to make both ends meet. Often, he and his wife went hungry trying to feed their three children. He worked all day among the shoots of sugarcane and returned home by dusk. There was a bakery on his way home at the main junction. It sold sweets and snacks of various kinds and was a busy place. Children and adults gathered alike to buy the goodies. One evening, the farmer was on his way back, exhausted from watering and weeding the fields. As he reached the shop, he was attracted by the mouth-watering smell of freshly baked cakes. He took a look. There was a set of cream cakes with chocolate icing on a platter. His eyes ached with longing. He wanted to taste a piece himself and buy some for his family. He hesitated for a moment but knew that he did not have money to buy even a single piece of the delicious cakes. Sad, he turned back on his long walk home. Just then, the shop owner called out to him in a rough voice, Hey you, stop there! Where are you going without paying me? Paying you? What for? asked the farmer quite alarmed. For the cakes, was the cool reply. But I haven't had any cakes, protested the poor farmer. That's true, confirmed the owner. But didn't you, Watson, enjoy the smell of the cakes? That's as good as eating it. The farmer grew quite confused. He did not have the strength to argue with a cunning fellow. Moreover, he had landed in this tight spot by tarrying at the shop entrance unnecessarily. He looked around, racking his brains for a way out. Next to the exit stood a man watching the scene with interest. He called the farmer to his side and whispered something in his ear. The shop owner tried to eavesdrop but failed to hear a word. The farmer's face brightened. He went up to the shop owner and put his hand in his pocket. The latter was happy, thinking that he could now fleece the fool. The farmer rattled the few coins in his pocket. Hurry up, said the shop owner. He wanted to finish off the deal before someone else intervened. I've already given you the money, said the farmer. What do you mean, said the irritated shop owner. I only heard the coins in your pocket. Well, said the farmer, if watching a plate of food is as good as eating it, rattling coins is equivalent to paying for it. He walked out of the shop, his head held high. The shop owner withdrew into the shop, defeated. How many children did the farmer have? Three. What were the items sold at the bakery? It sold sweets and snacks of various kinds. What did the farmer do on reaching the bakery? Attracted by the mouth-watering smell of the freshly baked cakes, he stayed for a moment. He wanted to taste a piece for himself and buy some for his family. Knowing that he did not have money even for a single piece of the delicious cakes, he turned sadly back home. How did the shop owner try to fool the poor farmer? The shop owner demanded money from the farmer. When the latter replied that he had not bought any cakes, he said that the smelling the cakes was as good as eating them and therefore should be paid for. The farmer grew quite confused. Who came to the farmer's rescue? A man who stood near the exit watching the whole scene came to his rescue. How did the farmer get out of the situation? The farmer went up to the shop owner and rattled the few coins in his pocket. 
When the latter asked him to pay up, he replied that if watching a plate of food was as good as eating it, uh, hearing a few coins uh, would be equal to paying for them. Then he uh, walked out holding his head high. Give the meaning of the phrase, to make both ends meet. To make both ends meet means to manage economically. Now that the first part of the episode is over, we will pass on to the second part, that is a dialogue on the post office. The post office is an institution with which every human being is related these days. The conversation that ensues is very interesting in the sense that it contains a number of polite forms and also forms of request. Good morning. Can I help you? Good morning. I would like to buy three five rupee stamps and four cards. Three stamps and four cards. Here you are. How much will that be? That will be 17 rupees. This is a registered letter for Bombay. The total amount will come to 55 rupees. Do you have change for 100 rupees? Sure. Can I send a speed post to Thurangar? That will go up to Nagar Koyal by speed post and from there it will take another day to reach Thurangar post office by normal post. Will that be okay? When do you think it will reach Thurangar? In two days. That's okay. Here's the money. Do you have two rupees to give me? Let me see. Yes, here it is. The polite forms used in this conversation are, as you must have noticed, Good morning, can I help you? Good morning, can I help you? The response, good morning, and the final thank you. Let's now take a look at sample sentences used in this kind of a situation. Good morning, I would like to buy three five rupee stamps and four cards. I'd like to buy three five rupees stamps and four cards. How much will that be? How much will that be? The total amount will come to 55 rupees. The total will come to 55 rupees. Can I send a speed post to Thuvarangad? Can I send a speed post to Thuvarangad? Yes, here it is. Also, here it is towards the end of the conversation means the same thing as here you are. Keeping these points in mind, let's take another look at the whole conversation with the script accompanying it on screen. Good morning, can I help you? Good morning, I would like to buy three five rupee stamps and four cards. Three stamps and four cards, here you are. How much will that be? That will be 17 rupees. This is a registered letter for Bombay. The total amount will come to 55 rupees. Do you have change for 100 rupees? Sure. Can I send a speed post to Thurangar? That will go up to Nagar Koyal by speed post and from there it will take another day to reach Thurangad post office by normal post. Will that be okay? When do you think it will reach Thurangad? In two days. That's okay. Here's the money. Do you have two rupees to give me? Let me see. Yes, here it is. Presently, we are going to part three, language practice. Here, the children are exposed to a number of 
life situations in which the use of prepositions uh, is significant. Uh, actually, the use of prepositions is a tricky matter even for the native speakers of English. So, one has to pay special attention to the kind of preposition that has to be used along with certain words, certain adjectives and certain other words. The story and the conversation we listen to today made use of words such as in, for, by, of, of, into, and so on. Such words are known as prepositions in English. Now, what do we need to know about prepositions? Very little. One, that prepositions are called so because they are prepositioned or positioned before the noun or pronoun or any other part of speech that they might govern. Second, they try to show the relationship between an object and the noun or pronoun that follows the preposition. As in the case of the sentence, the jug fell off the table. Here, the jug fell from where or to where is shown by the preposition of. When of is added, the meaning of the sentence becomes the jug fell down from the table and the relationship between the jug and the noun, the table, is shown. Let's take a look at some of the prepositions commonly used in English. We are going to Ponmadi this week. Breakfast is at 7.30 in the morning. Shall I send your up to your room or will you have it in the restaurant? During the daytime, the streets are busy, but at night, they are deserted. I go to school by bus. The pen is under the chair. The van stopped at the traffic lights and wouldn't start again. So the driver got out and pushed it to the side of the road. I have lived in Ernakulam since 1998. This letter is from my brother. We went for a walk in the evening. The jug fell off the table and broke into pieces. This book is about Thiruvendabaram city. Will you come with me to the parking lot? Throw away that pen, Murli. It is damaged. I am not going for lunch until we have seen the whole complex. We have to wait till it stops raining. Prepositions may be basically simple complex and stranded. Simple prepositions consist of short simple words the kind that we have seen so far. Complex prepositions on the other hand may consist of two or more words and may form phrases such as in addition to, disagree with, composed of and so on. Stranded prepositions are those in which the prepositions come at the end of a sentence as in who do you work for or which car did you come in? Let's take a look at some of the complex prepositions. In the case of complex prepositions we see that certain prepositions go with certain verbs. The museum complex consists of the zoo, the art gallery and the palace. You can agree or disagree with each other, but please don't fight. I am disgusted with the garbage on the road. I am going to write my mother. She is suffering from fever. Additional practice will help enhance our understanding of the same prepositions. We are going to Ponmadi this week. Breakfast is at 7.30 in the morning. Shall I send yours up to your room or will you have it in the restaurant? During the daytime, the streets are busy. But at night, they are deserted. I go to school by bus. The pen is under the chair. The van stopped at the traffic lights and wouldn't start again. So the driver got out and pushed it to the side of the road. 
I have lived in Ernakulam since 1998. This letter is from my brother. We went for a walk in the evening. The jug fell off the table and broke into pieces. This book is about Tiruvendapuram city. Will you come with me to the parking lot? Throw away that pen, Murli. It is damaged. I am not going for lunch until we have seen the whole complex. We have to wait till it stops raining. The museum complex consists of the zoo, the art gallery and the palace. You can agree or disagree with each other, but please don't fight. Disgusted with the garbage on the road. I am going to write my mother. She is suffering from fever. The story, The Price of Food, is studied with prepositions. So we come to the end of this episode. This episode had three parts. The first part dealt with specimens of spoken English to which the listeners were exposed and a few questions to test their comprehension were asked. In the second part there was a dialogue which uh, gave practice uh, to a number of sentence patterns useful for ordinary conversation in English. The third part deals with a few points of usage. Satoma Satgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mudurma Madam Gamaya.